as soon as it tells me. Fantastic. Well, indeed, we are here. Welcome to Hammondville Horror. Thank you for visiting. I am Clint. I am minus Don today. He was not feeling well, and he decided that he couldn't make this event. But we decided this month, month of December, that we were going to do uh, Hemi Deville Holidays, uh, where we talk about Christmas horror movies. I think that's a fantastic idea, and uh, I plan on making this one my, my first edition of that. Um, and I am joined today with a special guest and friend of the show, Abby Schneider. How are Hi, you doing guys. today? I will be playing the part of John Murray in today's installment of Hammondville Horror Podcast. Oh, good. You forgot your sunglasses, though. God damn it. And my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Double fail to begin, yeah. but yeah. I'm really happy to be here. It's awesome. Yeah, but that's okay. I tell uh, everybody who uh, who is sitting in for Don that uh, anytime you know they want to like um, manifest Don, all they have to do is say the first thing that comes into their head and swear a lot. So um, I, I'm, I'm expecting a lot out of you right now. Like, no, that's sort of my go-to MO. So I think we're good to go there. <laughs> so um, I know that uh, uh, you sit with us a lot uh, on Saturday nights when we do the Hammondville Hangouts, uh, which live stream uh, directly onto YouTube and sometimes on the Facebook. Um, and uh, we uh, have a lot of cool movie discussions there. Anybody who doesn't check those out, you probably should because they're they're a good time. Even if you're just sitting in the comment section, you know, uh, throwing out things that that you want to say about it. Telling it, us we're morons yeah. and such. Yeah, no, we love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We love exactly. It. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, people get really passionate about their movies, don't they? <laughs> it's true. No, I'm, I'm guilty as well, although I'm kind about it. But yeah, inside I'm like, yeah. what do you mean you hate me so far? No, I'm just yeah. Not that it's important. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you took, so, uh, took the time to do this. Um, you know, I, I'm excited. We were supposed to do another talk that, that we never actually got scheduled. And uh, we were going to do... Yeah, we were going to do an episode on the Black Phone, uh, which I still want to do um, if the Thanks. stars stars realign you know and and we actually uh, pull that together and, and get that happening um and uh because i did watch it you know and i thought it was a pretty good flick and i wanted the to talk damn about good it flick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i was pleasantly surprised but that will be for another day and we'll discuss that because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's yeah. christmas damn it that's right it's christmas damn it so we're we're talking christmas the movie that we have selected today is christmas bloody christmas it's so good. If you haven't seen it, it's currently streaming on Shutter, and I think it might be in some theaters. It's just not any theaters near me, but it it's definitely worth it. And I'm actually have been waiting all day to find out Clint's thoughts on it because he had some deep insights after watching it a second time. But <laughs> oh, I went deep. <laughs> I just want to start by saying I was telling him earlier that this has quickly moved into my number one Christmas horror themed movie for the year. I watch a certain amount, probably about 10, 15 horror movies that I love every year, every Christmas, uh, that just really put me in the Christmas spirit. But this one, I don't know, it just, it moved right up in the top, in the top three for darn sure. Might even be in the first place at this point. Oh, this one spoke to you. Man. Yes, it was a good time. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I normally don't do the, the Christmas movie thing. Um, and this is like the first year in a long time that, that I've given a few of those a chance. And now that I realize how freaking many Christmas horror films there are, oh. I, I'm, I'm having a ball. Checking you can out do some about of these six things. a day for every day of December and probably still have leftovers. Yeah. Thank you, Tubi. Because once <laughs> exactly. you watch one, man, they're all in your streaming. They're oh, like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Tubi, Bye. Shutter. Um, you can find some stuff on YouTube. Oh, there's one that I'm I'm thinking about checking out. Um, when I do check it out, I'm going to share the link um, on the page. Uh, you know, Black Christmas. Yes. Uh, the um, there is um, some filmmakers, uh, one of which is Dave McRae, if you've heard of him. I think he's a Canadian actor, and he's got like a podcast show of his own. Um, if you, I, I, I think his uh, Facebook page is Many Things Dave McRae or something like that. Okay. Um, he's going to be in, uh, or has been in, um, a fan film, which is a continuation of Black Christmas, called it's me billy it's me billy yes i yeah. think either you posted something or you shared one of his posts because yeah i am familiar with this and 
actually really looking forward to it because again, in my top three Christmas horror movies, mm -hmm. Black Christmas has always been my number one, my personal yeah. favorite. I, you know, watch it every year. Mm -hmm. So that to me is a little bit exciting. Um, that yeah. fact that the original, we never did get a closure on. Yeah. On anything. So yeah. Correct. And so I <laughs> think you also, you did watch, um, dead end as well right the christmas yeah yeah dead so end's i'm good. proud i'm proud man to bring you into the, the <laughs> dead, ends, car alone. dead end's good, good um time. yeah so yeah uh it's me billy is a two-parter so apparently really? they felt uh, they felt like they couldn't tell it in one part so it's a two-parter and part one is already out it's on it's on youtube so if you want to oh look, i will check that out it. if i have time mm -hmm. tonight i'm gonna check it out because <laughs> i you know i love that and I figure, and I say this to everybody, I have a lot of friends that are indie filmmakers and actors and directors and writers, make the movie, I will watch them. I will watch all of the horror movies anytime, any day. It's it's what I love to do. So um, I'm not a good critic because I just love most everything. And if I don't like it, there's usually very... <laughs> 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 yeah well yeah it, it would have to be like shockingly bad right shockingly bad for it not okay. to at least entertain me gotcha. um if you entertain me i'm happy it doesn't have to be a great movie i mean looking at you halloween ends i loved it i can't help it you know i get a lot of hate for it but i can't help it. <sighs> i wanted to like it so bad and i was so close to liking it if yeah, they'd have I done the they'd have done the thing that ryan joiner said i think i would have liked it agreed but. agreed but but that's um, a yeah, different so discussion. I, that is a whole other discussion. But yes, to the point of Christmas, bloody Christmas, I, I was saying to you before that I have I have sensory issues, issues with my brain. And sometimes in certain movies, you get those final girls or those girls that are about to be murdered, the screaming, the pitch in which they hit is actually painful to my little brain. This final girl, this main character, was so fantastic that, yes, she screamed her head off the whole damn movie, but she was badass, she was tough, she was covered in blood, she was brutal, and I don't think there was one point where she irritated me, <laughs> so I was pleasantly surprised, and the use of music and sound and constant neon lights which are kind of meant to distort you and distract you work so well in this but didn't detract from my viewing of it which was important mm -hmm. to me um, yes and an excellent use of lasers too excellent use of lasers 100 <laughs> percent. it really it's just a fun movie and again i don't i don't want to be spoilery oh but i i I, I'm going to put a disclaimer out here in front. There's no way for me to talk talk about this movie with, with without, without spoiling it. Fair. I'm, That's I'm, totally fair. I'm about to spoil the shit out of it. So uh, okay. anybody who's watching this, stop what you're doing. Go, go watch, watch the movie. It, come come back. back and finish the discussion. <laughs> yes. I mean, any movie that brutally murders a small child while he's standing at his Christmas tree looking at Santa is a certain <sighs> level of... Um, brutality that you just you don't see in everyday movies it's you just you certainly don't mommy this movie, <laughs> yeah this movie's brand new brand new this yeah. just came out i it's um, so good <laughs> i want yeah. everybody to see it and talk about it but and, uh, i am really excited to hear your your insights on your second viewing as i understand they were <laughs> they were um Oh, what's the yeah. word I'm looking for? Productive? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say I had deeper thoughts about it the second time through it, which is weird. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Is you it know, the kind of lingus? I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's the point in the movie where it happened. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, we can go out of order. I mean, if you want No, to... do your thing, man. I'm, I'm really intrigued. <laughs> I got to know. Right. All right. So, Je uh, what Joe Begos is the is the director and writer of this movie, um, and he of course has given us a couple of other films uh, around 2019, uh, Bliss and VFW. So yes, Nicole will be good movies. Yeah, Nicole will be happy to hear about VFW because she loves that thing. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of course, it's got Stephen Lang in it, so that doesn't hurt, right? Stephen Lang and. Um... William Sadler. William Sadler in one movie. 
looking grizzly and hot. Yeah. It's basically yeah. Nicole's wet dream, and I love yeah, it. Yeah, she was she was in heaven for sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I, I first impressions of this movie. Do you have any? First impressions of this movie. I speaking of what well, you say, the same gentleman that did VH. Um, mm -hmm. I just blanked in my brain. His yep. use of neon in every one of those movies, Bliss and and uh, um, VFW, is so intense. His use of color, and I'm you know I think we've discussed this before. I'm a very visual person, so if a movie catches me visually, even if the story lacks somewhat, I'm going to be enthralled in it. So right from the get go, um, well, they didn't waste a lot of time. I mean, and you know, ten minutes in and and. Santa's on a bloody rampage. Now, granted, I don't think we've ever figured out why the government created a insane killing machine. Well, I know they said they was going to take it to the Middle East and, you know, fight everybody that's again. But I'm not really sure how he became a mall toy store Santa. But I don't really think that's important in the grand scheme of things. The, the why. Just <laughs> it's really it. not. It's really not. Yeah. Um, so they started out with those fake commercials, which were great. Brilliant. Yeah. Really. Who was the uh, guy giving the liquor to the kids? He looked familiar. <laughs> That's not the guy that di directed uh, Jeepers Creepers, was it? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm okay. not sure. I didn't I didn't uh, register who he was in my brain. So uh, Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. He just looked familiar. Yeah, he may have looked familiar, but, uh, but I didn't uh, take note of actually who he was. Fair. But yeah, so it was some like... Uh, some like malted beverage type liquor that he was giving to these uh, <laughs> children. The whole family can enjoy it, you know. Um, and of course, uh, they talked about the military grade robot technology uh, <laughs> that that was now being used for mall Santas. And I love I love the line where they said replacing your local degenerate mall Santas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I can schlub off the street, but now we've got robots. <laughs> Now, uh, so, I mean, that's really all the exposition that we got. It's like, uh, wow, well, you know, it's military tested technology and it's made with all the same stuff. But now we're just using it for mall Santas. But <laughs> bug up campers. Very excited. Yeah. Hope you were good. Speaking yep. of mall Santas, do you have any personal experiences with mall Santas? I actually, oh gosh. So, you know, my friend Marcus Misery, uh -huh. when I was, I'm going to say 19 years old, his daughter was two and she wanted to see Santa. So I took her to the mall to see Santa, the good Jewish girl that I am. And um, I just actually found the picture this week. I'll have to show you later. Okay. Anyway, you know, two hours online waiting. I want to see Santa. I want to see Santa. I want to see Santa. And we get out there and she looks at me and she goes, I scared of Santa. So I had to sit on Santa's lap. And then she sat on my lap as far away from the evil Santa as possible. And those days you got an actual Polaroid picture, uh -huh. which she took and scratched Santa's face because it was still like wet. So it's literally got like gashes through Santa's face and me and, and Alicia just like, you know, it was, that's really my only time I sat on Santa's lap that I can think of that maybe was not at a horror convention. Wow. Uh, a friend of mine, Jody Hendricks used to do, a horror Santa at the conventions back when, and oh, cool! He was creepy as hell. <laughs> Miss that man, yeah. So, how about you, kids? Do this? Uh, does your daughter like Santa, or is this like a? We haven't attempted it yet. She knows she knows Santa by sight. Mm -hmm. So, like when I was rewatching the movie earlier today, you know, she spotted him on screen and said, "Santa," you know. But, Why uh... is Santa bloody? <laughs> She stopped watching, so thankfully. Um, and uh, but no, this was never uh, an experience uh, that I, I've given her yet. Um, it's not one that I had for myself. Um, they always had a Santa each year uh, at my local mall in the town that I grew up in, but uh, we never actually went and did that. Um, I don't know; it's just something my family didn't do. I know it's traditional yeah. for a lot of other people, but like I know when he goes around on the on the um, I'm gonna sit on the garbage truck on the fire truck. Yeah. It's very exciting. Um, right. Last was last weekend when I had my cookie party. He came yeah. through my girlfriend's neighborhood. It was raining. We ran out in our socks. We didn't even care. We're like, Santa! And the bitch didn't even look at us. <laughs> went down the other road. Still pissed. 
I'm pretty sure yeah. he's anti-Semitic. I'm just saying it out loud. I'm oh, right. yeah, yeah. Well, you Probably, could be right. You could be right. You know. I've been pretty good. Even yeah. when I had a chimney, that bitch never came over. Uh, so <laughs> I might have some issues. Maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, it. Uh, I always found the thing weird. Like the whole situation strange, you know. Sit on and, the stranger's lap and yeah. yeah. Um, I always preferred Santa to be a mystery, you know what I mean? It's like uh, something you might see from the distance, something you knew about, you know, uh, something you, uh, you know, believed existed when you were a child and you know eventually I wonder stopped about thinking that, that because i never had the pleasure of believing in santa because again <laughs> you know but i wonder and i've asked a lot of my friends this recently yeah. um when you found out that santa was not actually yeah. breaking and entering once a year into your home were you sad disappointed didn't really care because at that point you had just kind of been older and appreciated the magic or were you pissed at your parents for lying to you because i wonder if that's a fine line like i'm totally bribing you with this uh -huh. which i guess we do with religion in general so you uh -huh. know be good oh, or, totally yeah um, yeah yeah or consequences you know santa jesus santa yeah. jesus mm -hmm. i don't know but i mean you know i love him in theory i think everybody should be kind everybody should be giving everybody right should dress up as Santa and go on a killing spree every once in a while. No, right, I'm right. Stuff. Um, yeah, but no, not something I grew up with. I don't have many experiences other than screaming, Santa, I know him! Every time I see him because that's because I'm 12. Right. Well, that's quite all right. Um, yeah, I don't remember being upset learning that uh, Santa wasn't That real. Santa wasn't it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure my, my sister clued me in because she's three years older than me, so. I feel like that you know. helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my brother I, did get spanked for telling the neighborhood kid there was no Santa because he was going into, like, seventh grade and he thought kids oh, should know, but. no. All right. No, I'm he, exaggerating he, slightly, but still. He, he did the right thing. <laughs> he should have told him. I mean, it was a lot of years, I can't believe <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm I'm dying to hear. Mm -hmm. Yep. Your initial. I'm assuming you you very much like this movie. Yeah. Um. The first thing that struck me was um. The dialogue. Dialogue was really good. It was really good. Yeah. I mean, like, even it could the movie could have looked worse, and I still would have loved it. You know, mm -hmm. because the um. Uh, the speaking on screen was so captivating, you know, and, and our two main characters, well, I, I call main characters. One and a half. So, <laughs> right. When, when it first opened up, I mean, they just had this, this great rapport with the one banter. another, the, the back and forth, the banter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The chemistry, you know, yes. Our, our I mean, characters that we'll call Tori Toombs and um, uh, Robbie, the Reynolds. Other one? Robbie Reynolds. Robbie Reynolds. So, so of course she's got a record store, you know, um, and I guess she runs it. She's the boss. He works for her. Um, and um, I feel like I, I couldn't place the time period of this movie. Because I never, I mean, they talked about cell phones at one point, mm -hmm. you know, when they when they couldn't find them, you know, but it had an older look to it. Like, it, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying, but it reminds yeah. me that maybe it took place like somewhere in Canada where things like are a little, and that's yeah. not cut against Canada, please. <laughs> I love you, Canada. But you know what I mean? Like sometimes yeah. it's a couple of years with, yeah. behind with some of the things in parts where it's very rural. Uh, this definitely had a small town feel by the sheriff and the, yeah. the, was it a deputy? I don't know what that guy was. He was just a pain in the ass, but. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think he was. He was um, officer, Officer Smith. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever. But like the cars were older, you know, some of like the styling of what people were wearing seemed to be out of date. You know, um, Robbie Reynolds kind of had a mullet, you know. He sure and, did, uh, yeah. <laughs> and and he was wearing, you know, like the the classic looking leather jacket, you know, he had a mustache, you know, and it's like, well. I mean, unless mustaches are coming back, you know, to me, they're still out of style. Are they coming back? I, I don't know. Everything seems to be I, coming back. I totally so. disagree with that. You know, like Agreed. it should not come back. It should not come back. Yeah. No, I get you. I do. I porn do. stash, stay gone. We don't want <laughs> porn stash. So bad. Yeah. Um, I feel like in that case, it's kind of timeless because mm -hmm. they do mention 
albums that came out maybe in at least the 90s, early 2000s, but nothing that you can pinpoint to say this was 1999 or this was 2005. Right. But again, they mentioned enough albums later in the day that you're like, okay, it's at least somewhat current. They had the cell phones. But I like that you can't pinpoint a time because right. it doesn't ever feel like it's passe or past that. Or yeah. I watched some movie... I'm pretty sure it was an old, was it wasn't Shutter. It was one of those like back where it was a Japanese movie back in the day, and then I guess the '90s they remade it. And mm. um, the tech is so outdated because they're all on these like dot matrix computers with the big, you know. <laughs> and it's just it doesn't hold up in that regard. And I like that sure. there's nothing in this. You know, you've got some throwbacks with the records, and you've got some right you know, cell phones and stuff. So I just kind of like that. It's not outdated. Yeah. yeah. The, the only two things that really brought this into modern times for me was, was uh, cell phone usage um, or, or at least talking about them and discussing Tinder. Yes, so, that's right. Tinder. So, so Tinder is not super old. So no, I mean, but I would think within the last decade for sure. Right. Right. I'm so, trying to think of where it's been filmed. Yeah. Or where it's supposed to take place, I should say. Mm -hmm. It just says small town. So, um, <laughs> in Canada somewhere. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, somewhere there. So, so yeah, they, they had the Tinder date discussion, you know, um, and basically they're closing up shop. And uh, he very skillfully talks her out of not going on this Tinder date and mm -hmm. drink, drinking with him. And uh, they decided... Uh, to go see their friends down at the toy store um, since they were closing that down and they're basically going to stay in there all night. So they were going down there to party with them, take the bottle of whiskey or whatever it was they had with them. Um, and they go down the street and they have this discussion about Christmas music on the way down there. And I was interested to know, are there any Christmas music um, albums or songs or done specifically by anybody that you care for? whether they mentioned it or not. Uh, that song by the waitress is that that's every year that comes out. Um, uh, I got to look it up. I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. It's the one I look forward to every year. Uh, okay. I don't know it, of course, forgive me, but I am just terrible with names of things. And I don't want to sing it for you because you're welcome. <laughs> um, but I mean, but that's kind of what I mean about this movie. There's so there's so many identifiable things and talking points, you know, um, that, that most people, you know, like in our general age range can really appreciate, you know, like um, like the Bad Religion Christmas album, you know, the Crypt Keeper Christmas, yes. you know, Beavis and Butthead Christmas, Merry Christmas Ramones. You know, um, yeah, see, Halloween is more for me than Christmas when it comes to the right. songs, the movies, the episodes. Although I do love a good, they do love a good Christmas movie. I love the sparkling lights to me. That just makes me very happy. My Wi Fi is not working, so I cannot look up the name of this song. However, um, it's about the girl. She like runs out of cranberry sauce. She's going to be alone for Christmas and she goes to the store and she runs into the guy she's been flirting with for the past. And, um, Oh, wow. It's a uh. whole thing. And, it, and it, you'll know it because it's on every year. It's called Christmas Wrapping. Oh, okay. I think I've heard of that. I can't. I know you've heard it. Directly I remember. I'm sending it. you a link later for you to hear. I will um, play it. <laughs> I will send you, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, it's part of me hates when everything is playing Christmas music and all the stores and all the radios, but then I'm the one singing along and. I went mm -hmm. out for Mexican food last night, and Feliz Navidad happened a lot okay. all night. Because once it gets in there, it's I can handle that. Yeah, I'm um, I'm not a big fan of some of the other uh, Christmas uh, Christmas songs that are like traditional. Um, uh, if if I was going to go for something that was Christmas kind of themed, uh, I would want to hear something like the Nutcracker Suite or something like that. Um, not really much into like songs um, about Christmas. They're just played to death and they've never really, anybody who tried to redo one never did a great job with it. You know what I mean? I They're forgot least... about No Doubt has a Christmas song called Oi to the World. That's one of my favorites <laughs> that I listen to every year. 
Boy um, to the world. Boy to the world. And again, I will I will be providing with links to these songs so yeah. that you can understand. Absolutely. Um, you know, do they know it's Christmas time at all? Probably not, but I like oh. that song too. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. And I'll throw out uh, I'll throw out my my embarrassing Christmas song that I like. Um, if you um, remember uh, the Eagles, please come home for Christmas. So. Oh yeah, I don't think that's embarrassing. I think that's a pretty good song. No, I like um, that one. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. You go, Kelly Ma, and it burst into flames. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> Where's her hat? Did she lose her hat? Oh, ooh, it's it has not been on for like a okay, day. Okay, I'm not even gonna bring it up. Don't want her to yeah, hear it. Yeah, yeah. Day or I was two. Surprised. Um, she's been sick, so like uh, today was rough. Aww. She uh, nah, she did get a good long nap, you know, but uh, she, and she's doing better now. But uh, yeah, you know, kids get sick, and that's where we I've are. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, germ monsters, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so we get to the toy store where we're reveling in, in our Christmas friends and our Christmas booze mm -hmm. and our everybody knows the guy with the four kids and yeah, they've Emmett. got a little what's-his-name's back, you know, um, yep. wearing his guy liner. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do happen to love um, what's-his-face, uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips and everything. And he does. I just love that man. I think he's fantastic. And he actually was the acting in this movie was really well done for a Christmas horror movie, let's just say. For any horror movie, a lot of times they're they're low budget and the acting can be subpar. Doesn't always ruin it for me. But in this case, as you said, the dialogue was fantastic. The storyline was fun. You don't need to think too much about it and go, well, why is because nobody gives a heck. Who cares? <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. It's awesome. Um, right. Yeah. No, absolutely. You're 100% right. I mean, the, the acting was really good in this. Um, I can't think of any performance that stood out to me as bad. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was all well done. So I um, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't go on long. <laughs> I'd hate to have it all through the recording. But, <laughs> nah. but um, we'll sing Christmas songs, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, they, they don't they don't hang out long at the toy store. She's like, this is too much Christmas stuff for me. So she's like, we're we're out. We're going down to the local bar. So they they, they piss off down the road, you know. And of course, they stick around to to um, have their little party. And this is the part that that uh, Ryan really liked. They got into like ass eating here. So I mean, he was just amazed by that. And it was it was kind of amazing. That, that and was it, included. You know, somebody commented on it running that scene running too long, but I disagree um, because it was yeah. cut back and forth with mass murder and loud music, and and it wasn't just like I don't love to just watch a sex scene where you're hearing all lips smacking and it's just like yeah I but but. This was just fun on so many levels, and they just took it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just a pound pound. It was this little nerd boy saying, "You don't got me right," and and I'm going to set you straight. And I I wanted to high five him when he was done. He yeah. really did. And then, yeah. Are you inviting me to? Are you asking me to peg you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that dude. Oh, that scene. Oh, yes, yes, that scene. Yeah. No, I, I, I've been in like in the uh, the toy store. Oh, and the yeah, that, yeah, that where was, uh... where Santa becomes, you know, Skynet self-aware or whatever was happening there, you know. Yes. And and they were down at the bar, so like, um, yeah, they run into uh, Sheriff Monroe while they're down at the bar, uh, and they had this wonderful conversation where this is where I started to not like our female character a little bit because, not you know, not like just in general, uh, but her opinions on on music were starting to strike me like, <laughs> she was hitting in a weird place yeah yeah, yeah yeah so like uh uh you had mentioned it a little earlier about you know the second a band cuts their hair they cut their worst album you know and and to a degree i i could agree with one thing that that, that she was saying you know I, I wasn't a huge fan you know of when metallica put out load Oh, it's you know, a terrible album. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's like 
they cut their hair. Everybody freaked out about that. They put out load. Everybody freaked out about that. And um, and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't care for that one at all. But then she crapped on Soundgarden. And I'm like, okay. I am yeah. Nobody crap on Soundgarden. Yeah. I'm yeah. a super huge Chris Cornell fan, and I really right. love the Super Unknown album. Mm -hmm. You know, it now if she would have if she would have dropped the other one that came after that down on the upside, I would have been like, um, yeah, maybe. There's still some good songs on there. Right. But um, <laughs> now didn't he didn't what's his name bring that up though uh, and call out that album saying yeah you're wrong like wasn't Robbie like? Oh yeah, he's like he's like there's not a bad song on the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we like yeah. Robbie, man. Yes, we do. Robbie but, was cool. Yeah, no, I, I I get that she's she's got her opinions. Um, and she dumped on Ben Hagar too. I was like, what? Yeah, come I'm, on. It's, I like Sammy Hagar. I have nothing against Sammy. Not a big Van Halen fan anymore. I feel like that was yes. um, twenty year old me for some reason, and I think I've just grown out of it. But maybe yeah. I just heard every song too many times, which is highly possible. Yeah. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with all of her thoughts on on sequels. Um, oh yes, my, I would actually disagree with a few of them, but mm -hmm. like she brought in Alien Covenant is better. Than oh my god, than Alien. yeah, yeah. Let's and I skip. couldn't reach through the TV and slap. Let's her, so. skip to that. Right? <laughs> uh, we'll we'll jump a little bit. Uh, I, I forgave her for hating on Blumhouse, mm -hmm. um, even though I like some Blumhouse things. Um, I like quite a bit of Blumhouse things, actually. Yeah, me too. And, uh, and they do get dumped on quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, she specifically, they were calling out uh, franchises and, and she was naming her favorite one of them. You know, he said Elm Street. She said part six, Freddy's dead. Which is, which is where I could no longer take her seriously. And I felt that she was just saying things. Just, I felt like she was part of our Saturday night saying yeah, things. Yeah. To get a rise out of somebody. Like it yeah. was either Ryan or Adam in the back going, yeah, you know, but like, <laughs> yes. no, I seriously, like, I feel like that was just, you know, and not for nothing. I know yeah. Blair Witch gets a lot of hate, mm -hmm. but Book of Shadows, really? Come on. Not right. a terrible movie, just she right. been a Blair Witch. And yeah, um, I don't know. I, I disagreed with a lot of that part of her, but. Um, All right. So your opinion in life. Did, did you want to play that game? What's uh, what's your favorite Elm Street? My favorite Elm Street. See, I'm an original. I love the original, and I love three. But honestly, New Nightmare might be. Oh, okay. Like, that's like way up there. When that came out, it sort of revitalized a series for me that had already. Uh, let's say Freddie was one of my obviously one of my favorites in the '80s. It was, you know, he was fun. He was quippy he had all these little one-liners and i thought it was great but like a lot of these things i feel like it went on too long and he just became like dad puns and and it's fine and it was good but i feel like it lost the fear so to me the original was the scariest okay yeah but then i thought new nightmare was a great way to bring everything back around and i know it's unpopular but um part two i love I like part two also. Yeah, I just feel like it took it in a in a yeah. completely different way, and I know everybody bitched about it because it didn't follow the, the what you had one movie before this. There's nothing right. to follow. Yeah, yeah. You this know, it's time to change things up and make new. And people wanted to get upset about the you know the homoerotic stuff that was in the movie, but I'm like, get over that. Yeah, get over you know? it. You his know, it, his it, dance like, in part two. That didn't make it a bad movie. No. Yeah. No, I I love it so. I think that honestly, Freddy's Dead is, I hate to say it, one of my least favorite of the entire, of the entire <laughs> genre, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm there also, but I'm a part three guy. If I had to pick a favorite, it's the one that entertains me the most. Right. So, and the one that you watch yeah. the most, because mm -hmm. every time yeah. it's on, you're going to stop and watch it. Right. And we need some Kincaid. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Hellraiser. Hellraiser. I'm going to get a lot of shit for I am not a huge Hellraiser fan. I okay. love the first two. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I couldn't care less. Um, so of the first two, I mean, I just think the first one's always going to be my favorite with that because it was the first one that introduced me to these, to this world, to these characters. The second one is a very good movie. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I will be honest with you. I don't think I've seen past the fourth one. One day I said, oh, I'll sit down and I'll oh, do all of them. But That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I thought too. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, she said Hell on Earth, which is the third one. I don't care for that one at all. I, um, I, I'm a part two guy. I, and I get that. And I like the, yeah. the, the little blonde girl in part two. I like mm -hmm. the camaraderie. I like the, the completion of that story. But I don't know. It was just, I don't know. But yet, yeah. well, I don't know. Return of the Living Dead, I'm, be I'm torn between one and three. Because I feel like three is the most romantic of the mm -hmm. Living Dead movies. With, ah. um, what's her name? Uh. Oh, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And um, was that the one with the, was that the girlfriend died in a motorcycle accident, brought her back to life, that type of thing? Yes, yes. Um, okay. Melinda Clark. Okay. Who is okay. stunning and gorgeous. And that, the cover of the, the, the VHS tape with, you know, her with the spikes and the things coming out. Sure. Super hot, but it was a very Romeo and Juliet yeah. story. And it was lovely. Yeah. I actually but, have some some gaps in the Return of the Living Dead series that I have to fill, so I can't actually say that I've seen that one. Oh, okay. I will recommend it. That one I watch every Valentine's Day because oh. it's romantic. Okay. So yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, it's actually streaming for free on Freebie, which I think is through Prime. Oh, uh, okay. But you yeah, don't have to pay extra to get that if you have Yeah, that. I see. I see. Mm. Well, maybe I'll go check that out then. Maybe you should. Yeah, maybe I should. Maybe you should. But yes, I um, I disagree Child. with her on that, but I still liked her as a whole. She looked very good covered in blood. Yes. And it was a plus. Child's Play? You original on that Child's one? Play, I actually do prefer the second one. Oh, so you agreed with her on one. Okay. I, I did. Um, I love the first one. It is the original originator, but, but Christina Lee's Kyle is... I mean, the second one's fantastic. The foster parents, like everything about the second one is just a fun movie. They bring all these people back in. And and honestly, like the toy thing at the end where Chucky gets mangled. And I just, I love that movie. I love the yeah. first one. I think it's, um, the kid was amazing. And it, like when you go back and watch as a child actor, the um, the way he emotes I, I don't want to be rude, but I think he was better as a kid in that regard. You know, like seeing him as an adult trying to play tough. He's fun. I love the Chucky series. You know, I love all the actors. But yeah, that second one is just a fun movie. This whole like brother sister camaraderie I really enjoyed. Yeah. And I uh, love yeah. some Christina Lease. Yep. It is cool. But um, what about you? Strangely enough, I still love the first one. Well, like, that's uh, not strange. It's, it's, yeah, again, it's, it's the original. It's, yeah. It was a good origin story uh, for that series, and 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 they really dropped off, you know, the further further in you went. I mean, I won't say I hate them all, but I mean, it, it's kind of like Hellraiser. It's like the more they made, kind of the worse they got. And <laughs> they just got campy and cheesy, but yet yeah. I enjoy those more, and I'd rather rewatch all of the campy ones versus <laughs> the later Hellraisers. Oh, totally, totally, yeah. Because yeah. I, I was going to pick Child's themselves. Play over. Yeah, Hell well, Razor. they don't take themselves as seriously as right. the Hellraiser movies still tried to do later on. Mm -hmm. They were taking themselves very seriously where Chucky was like, yeah, fuck it. You know, <laughs> I got a bride, I got a kid, we're good. Yeah. But I did enjoy when Jennifer Tilly came into it. That was awesome. God, so, yeah. so they got a little bit better when that happened. I mean, yeah. Yeah, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me more about Ali your, uh, Aliens, your the last one. What's up? Aliens, the last one. She said Covenant. I think that one sucks. Uh, Covenant, no, it's not. It doesn't suck. It's just definitely not the best. But in this case, I have a hard time picking because Alien, for me, is just a movie that uh, the suspense and the, you know, it was the first, but I might even agree. Well, I don't know. I can't say Aliens is a better movie than Alien but I think it's more fun in a rewatch, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I mean, I've oh, seen yeah. them both a hundred times, but Aliens is bigger, goofier, you know, more yeah. one-liners. It's more fun to watch, but I still think Alien is a better cinematic, you know, it, yeah. it, uh, and the original, they, this comp, 
uh, this concept and and it, it also exploded all over itself with many many remakes but what about you what's your favorite aliens alien um wasn't I'm it rocking go... up next four the best <laughs> no ryan uh, says his favorite horror movie of all time is alien three three that's what um, it was yes yeah I, I i'm an aliens guy uh but that's just because uh well the things you said it's more exciting than the first movie mm -hmm. um it's bigger you know it's um it's, it's got Hollywood. more yeah it's got more entertainment value um Bill although the first movie is amazing and it's very simple mm -hmm. um and uh, creepy yep small cast and um it is a legit horror movie that just takes place in space right. you know you've got all those same horror elements and aliens but it's more of an action film than it but is it's just more fun uh, it's just fun as shit. and and i think that's where my my love for strong female characters came from i mean ripley yes vasquez and yeah. uh sigourney weaver and yeah and, oh i love them all and yeah. that to me you know i'm I was a huge Xena Warrior Princess fan. I love a woman that kicks some ass. It really oh, yeah. makes me happy. Yeah. Lucy Lawless is amazing. Lucy Lawless is my yeah. dream girl. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So it's like uh, it's like the the fact that that uh, that they wrote such a, a tough character, somebody who'd been through a trauma, came into this. You know what I mean? Despite their their fear and apprehensions for it, you know, and then managed to salvage something out of it and be the toughest person there. Right. You know what I mean? Um, just because they knew that she knew that the only way to survive was to was to to keep herself under control and and think under pressure. And, yep. And she used everything that she had learned from the first movie to combat it now. And um, she learned her child died. Came across a smile child there, so immediately she had these maternal <laughs> instincts that kicked in. There was a lot of levels to this movie. And Paul though. Reiser was a giant douchebag. Yeah, yeah, which is probably not that far from the truth. <laughs> I, I don't know the guy, but I mean, and I haven't heard that specifically, but right. Uh, but it just he, seems like he did it a little too scenario. well. <laughs> yeah, there's something real about that. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, and and the culmination of the movie with her getting in that loader and and you know just telling her just get away from her. You You've bitch, seen my profile you know? picture of me in the uh, <laughs> loader fighting the alien. Yeah, that was one of my favorite moments ever. Right. Scary to climb up in that thing, but. One of my favorite moments ever. Yeah. So yeah, just the the whole thing. That's one of my comfort movies. I can put that on just about any time. Love that thing. I love a good comfort movie. Yeah. So, not that I meant to spend so much time on that, but that's what I mean about this movie. They they put so many identifiable things into it. it gave us so many talking points. You know that. Uh, you know it's like yeah. This, and this... again, I agree with you very much on the conversation. As again, I'm saying it just reminds mm -hmm. me of all of us when yes. you're with your friends when you're hanging out whether it be at a convention or in a bar or of via facetime they basically just sounded like us picking on each other and and um you know minus the sexual tension which we all know is totally there but um <laughs> you know it was but i really the characters were so relatable in an obscene mm. and absurd setting which it's fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Yeah. So I've delayed it long enough. I'll give my thoughts here um, on the, uh, the make out scene and the, the cunnilingus as we say, or the pussy eating scene, whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, so there are two things going on at this time. So there's the, the make out sesh with these two main characters that we have, you know, and, um, um, he takes this as his moment to to prove, you know, something We're that they, they 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 mentioned earlier in the movie, you know, where where he claimed he was good at it, you know what I mean? And she made the the uh, distinction that no man could do this, uh, or at least not well. Which is something um, else I disagree with, but that I will digress. <laughs> right. Um, and of course, at this point, um, they don't know that Santa's killing people yet. Um, they just happen to be on the street when he got done killing their friends right so he zeroed in on them started to follow them you know they left somehow he managed to track them all the way to the general area of where they were he just went to the wrong house right but then again he is yeah. government 
uh, right. sentient robot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so I'm sure I'm sure his uh, tracking abilities were quite good, which or, is how he got so close. <laughs> or it was just the closest house to walk to. Right. You know, we're assuming he was looking for her. Yeah. But he could have just been like, I'm going to walk down the street and kill what I see. Oh, wait, here's a small child and his crackhead mother. And and um, I did. I was like, oh, is he real? Oh, yeah, he did. Um, so maybe he wasn't specifically looking for her. Maybe it is like Michael Myers all over again wasn't really looking for Lori. He was just put in the position where there she is. Maybe. But maybe. either way, yes, I agree. It, it started out at the neighbor's house. Go ahead. Yep. So uh, I'll uh, I'll get your thoughts on this. Th this is what occurred to me right after I saw it the second time. And and I started putting my thoughts down on paper because I was like, oh, man, it's good. I don't want to lose it. Um, I felt that, you know, while while the pussy eating scene is happening, you know, the dad is also getting killed in the other house. Yeah. So. You know, he heard Santa break in. He yells down the steps thinking it's his kid, you know, trying to open presents early. You know, he says, you know what's going to happen if I come down there? You know, the dad goes down there basically assuming that he's going to beat this kid's well, ass. Well, does Santa come up? I'm trying to remember if he comes up um, the stairs, like the father's over here. And I think he, but I couldn't quite figure out how that yeah. was positioned. But yes, go on. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't know. sure either because because then he goes up the stairs after the after that kill. Right uh after, after the mom so uh i just assumed that the dad came out that makes um, sense from wherever he was so he gets an axe in the back you know and then as he's trying to crawl up the stairs basically gets his skull caved in by santa's boot all right <laughs> so i originally thought that this was a scene that was made to just give us that mix of sex and violence, you know, that, that we're so used to seeing that was like fan serving, you know, you know, for the, for like, usually like for the males, the audience, you know what I mean? That's who mm -hmm. responds to it mostly, although not exclusively. Um, but then I thought about it a little bit more and I thought, you know, this damn near feels like a feminist statement that we're making here because of what was actually happening so it's like we don't have some you know alpha male type dude and a submissive woman you know That's what i mean I there was no pound 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 it was right I we have a care of business and he never even got his yeah exactly yeah. he got nothing out of that you know like she got Except an orgasm for the out joy of, it. of knowing a job he, well done he yes, even he literally proved. got a pat on the back hundred <laughs> percent and he proved what he set out to prove. So mm -hmm. if nothing else, I mean, I am fat. I mean, I'm sad for him that he didn't get his cookies at the end of the day. But I feel like pride in a job well done should at least be a portion of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, yeah. and 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 that is a gift in itself. Um, <laughs> and and then they had the, the little dialogue point about pegging. So like he was, you know... Uh, he was whether, the submissive. Whether it was a joke or not, he was offering mm -hmm. her a position of power over him. And then, of course, this happening at the same time as an over-masculine, threatening father figure getting his head stopped in. Yep. So we're basically... And dying face down, which That's... I feel positionally is, sure. you know, just him laying on the ground and him coming and getting the axe in the back and the... And the stomp on the head, it was a very, yeah. you're right. It was a very, it was a swap of power, so to speak. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, not I, but. And I enjoy those things so much. I feel like we were, we were metaphorically, you know, lifting the woman up, putting her into an, an empowering position. And we were also crushing toxic masculinity. I love it. I love it. That makes yeah. me happy. <laughs> and it was a beautiful scene. And I would have to say that, you know, that was probably my favorite part of the movie once I had that realization. And do you, do you think I love, they did it on purpose? <laughs> uh, you know, because I didn't think of it, I'd love to say no, but you could very well be right because it is, he is a very visual director mm -hmm. and everything about this, the, the visual, the cinematography, the music, the, the lights, the, 
I would be willing to say, although I'd never considered it, you are probably a hundred percent correct. And I'd be willing to say, yeah, it was done on purpose Okay. because again, she didn't have to go down on him. Mm -hmm. And I don't say, I shouldn't say have to, I right. mean, normally when these scenes start, you know, she's got a rev an engine or something. This, yeah. this engine was revved and he was ready to go, you know, and even <laughs> the subtle way he just repositions himself when she goes down to get something, you know, yeah. it's just, he was sitting back with the job well done, <laughs> you know, fixing his little sheriff and, uh, um, so no, I, I, I would say, yeah, maybe that was intentional. And I would love for you to find out if you could ever interview the guy. Yeah, that would be cool. That'd that be would a be great cool. question. Mm-hmm. So I didn't mean to cut you off what you were saying. What was the other thing about that scene that you loved or, or did you forget already? Um, I was probably way out of my head. Um, but no, I just, I really did. Like I said before, like gratuitous sex scenes for me, I just, it gets old. I can't stand listening to people kiss and the smacking noises oh, yeah. and the, if I'm not getting it, it's not making me happy. So mm -hmm. I loved I don't know. It just, it didn't, it, everything about it was raw and <laughs> powerful on both sides, uh -huh. you know? And, and uh, yeah, no, I thought it was fantastic. I, I just, it didn't annoy me and that's huge. Yeah, it is. It is. Huge. Yep. So sadly, Santa did not stop killing people after he took out the dad. Sadly. Yeah. 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 He took mom, out the mom, and I thought that was unfair. Like, she didn't yeah, she do anything. she didn't do anything. She was cowering in the, you know, with her little knife. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, it's hard to say, why don't you jump out a window? I don't know. I just, I keep thinking I would be getting out of there. But I'm also not a mom, and my kid is not somewhere in the house. Although I don't feel like she would have necessarily been like, hey, wonder where my kid is while well, Santa. Yeah. But that, I did feel bad in, for her. That she instinct was, did not kick in. <laughs> no. No, not at all. And then, you know, I just a little boy going, Mommy, is that you? Santa, did you bring me anything good? Okay. And he's like running over the tree. And you're like, oh. And then Santa comes up behind him while he's opening his shitty clothes. Who the hell it's, gets, like, you know? it's like clothes. Oh, damn it. And then to turn around. So not only is this Christmas ruined by clothes, uh -huh. but he turns around and see Santa bathed in the blood of his folks. Mommy. Yeah. Mommy, it's like, Santa, why are you so bloody? <laughs> Santa, why are you so? And then, then her being downstairs and able to just see it through the window, even yes. that scene was perfect. I didn't mm -hmm. need to see the kid get his head caved in the way I needed to see the father get his head stomped in or the boyfriend right. get the axe to the skull. You know, I, I, I'm not saying I didn't think it was funny that they killed the kid. I didn't want to see it though, so yeah. I think that also was very well done. Yeah. They showed you enough where you knew what happened, but they didn't throw it and rub it in your face. But her reaction to it was so pure. It was just like, holy fuck, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know, I just, I feel like everything she did would be something I would have done in the situation. She didn't make stupid decisions. She was just, this is what needs to happen right now. And right. like, I work better that way instead of mm -hmm. like stopping and reacting and maybe thinking through things. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. No, they, they were very artful with uh, what they showed on screen, what they didn't. And, mm -hmm. and I also was appreciative of that and they weren't afraid to show things on screen. How many head splits did we get? That's what I mean. Like Robbie, you know? Robbie got it bad, you know, like yeah. just, and then, you yeah. know, put stomping and who was the other one? Um, now the first couple, Mm -hmm. We didn't see much of her head getting. I mean, we we saw right, but we didn't see right. Uh, we got a fun. we got a POV of um, of robot Santa uh, bashing her head, mm -hmm. with, which is why it you know they could get away with so much because there was so much movement there. They didn't have to be real specific about that effect, and it was so well done, real graphic either. Yeah, right. It was really to, well done. Yeah. To me, I mean. I am always a practical effects person. That's just my love. I'm mm -hmm. a too. little CGI never hurts if it's done well, but mm -hmm. I would rather there not be. Yeah. Um, there are movies where uh, like uh, let me in the remake of let the right one in uh -huh. my only gripe about that was the two scenes where they over CGI. And I felt like it pulled me right out of there and the movie would have been better without 
That's usually my view on this. I loved the point of view of him because again, they didn't have to show me bad effects. Yeah. The way they did it, they saved their their FX work for the ones that you were gonna really feel split open. And uh, <laughs> but I feel like uh, I don't know. I was really impressed with the way it was shot. I, it felt high budget, if that means anything. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely did. Right. And and I don't know exactly what they spent on this movie, but um, uh, I, I would say that that the movie probably looks bigger budget than what it is. Like, and I feel like the neon has a lot to do with that. Probably. I, I Probably. don't know why. And I think it's just that part of me that really likes shiny things. Uh -huh. Yeah. That, you know, I'm, I'm the one walking down the street that just something catches my eye. It's shiny. Yeah. Um, this movie worked with color very well. And I know I sound like, remember that discussion we had about how to sound like a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. This is one of those points where I, where I tow the line because, um, like Argento, I love his use of color, and I just sound like one of those douchebags where you're like, "Oh no, my!" <laughs> this... But it's true in this case. There's just something about the total immersion in the red color and the blue color that just made it almost comic book esque, uh -huh. and and that graphic novel part of my brain really likes that. Um, yeah. But yeah. Well done use of color, I feel. Yeah, yeah. The stag averted. Yeah, and Robbie didn't necessarily need to die, you know, especially since, um, you know, well, if he could have just learned to back up worth a shit. Yeah. So, uh, he, uh, <laughs> you know, let's back up into a parked car trying to get away from this, you know, and damn near uh, get killed. It and was then... a snowstorm. He was under stress. <laughs> and drunk. <laughs> and then a little bit fucked up. Yeah. But um and he backs up again and hits a tree. Now his now his Jeep Wagoneer is completely screwed and they gotta they, they can't do anything. On his roof and uh Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a rough scene. Uh, the, uh he had to die. I mean it's terrible, but yeah. yep. she needed because we needed her to be the final girl. Yeah. Um, it, and it, it was his time. They, they it didn't was wait his too time. long. He also he went out a hero because let's be honest, yeah. I don't think Robbie could have kept the level of coolness up for the rest of his existence to keep someone like Tori engaged. And, yes, yes, I think they had a perfect night, mm -hmm. and I'm sad to see you go. But forever she will think that Robbie was the perfect guy because he had no chance to fuck it up. <laughs> That's right. And That's I right. feel like. Just knowing, basically, he was everybody I knew in my 20s. Yeah. Love him. She didn't but, have yeah. a chance to get bored. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Perfect so length I feel of like time. In his, in his best hero way, he had to die. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Robbie. Yeah, sorry, Robbie. Sorry, Robbie. So, but, and, you know, the... It made sense by this time that that you know some emergency responders would start showing up because somebody nearby had to hear all this stuff going on. I know it's a very small town, yeah. and they might be the only two houses for miles because they yeah. were right next to each other, like in that whole farmhouse thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. yes, go on. And um, so of course she gets intercepted, you know, by some more police. She's begging them for help. They want to hear that shit. They, what are you doing that in this squad car? You that know, dude pissed me off, man. Yeah, thinking she stole that car. You know what happened to him? He's dead. It's like, what and you do you can't mean drive dead? under the influence anyway. Well, okay, yeah, fuck yeah. you, dude. <laughs> yeah, covered so, yeah. in blood. Yeah, cautions them, rightfully so. You know, don't go up there alone. You know, it's gonna kill you. You know that mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, and uh, doesn't matter. Take her back to the station anyway. And like, and she just absolutely knows it. After they have that conversation at the station with the approaching ambulance, she's like, "Oh shit, it's Santa." You're <laughs> fucked. Yeah, that's what I think every time I hear an ambulance too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they had that really cool car crash scene there. That's um, awesome. Yep. Yeah. And um, we had some spectacular looking fire. We had them go outside, die rather spectacularly. Rather, yes, yeah, I, and I have to let's let's take a moment mm -hmm. to appreciate the kills from this movie because yeah. it wasn't gore for the sake of gore, mm -hmm. but it was beautiful gore. Yeah, it was it was well done. I 
I feel like sometimes they do things just to shock you in movies. Right. And, uh, I don't know. I would rather you just, just all the blood everywhere. Like I said, I mean, they didn't, they, they like, they ashed her with blood. Like they were just like Bruce Campbell, you like just, and it's yeah. perfect. Um, I don't know. It, it actually, it just made me giggle like through a lot of the movie, which I'm not sure what that says about me. Um, I actually ruined when I saw Midsommar in the theaters. My friend told me that I ruined his experience because I I giggled the whole movie. I I don't know what it was, but it just it spoke to me on such a weird place, and I just kept okay. giggling. And he's like, "You just kept pulling me out of it, man." He's kept giggling. And I'm like, "What is she laughing at?" I'm like, "I don't know." So yeah, this movie did that for me too, and I enjoyed that very much. That's great. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yep. So as per usual, she narrowly escapes this killer. Narrowly. Takes that ambulance for a ride. But he catches it anyway. Well, so, doesn't he just grab on the back of it or something as she's yeah. going when she finally gets it started? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Grabs the back, you know, climbs inside. She's freaking out because she's angry about it, but also doesn't know what to do. And um, I'm pretty sure that she intentionally crashed into her own car. Oh, I didn't realize it was her car, but yeah, she did, yeah. She did crash. Because I think we're back at the same parking lot that, that they went to sense. after, you know, um, they decided to to go back to her place um, and they took Robbie's Wagoneer and she gestured to her car, which you saw her park at the beginning of the movie. And it looked yeah. like some, you know, I don't I couldn't even tell what it was, you know, some just box, call it an El Camino. For bo yeah. Boxy looking station wagon is what I thought it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she. Basically, to me, it looks like she wrecked into her own car, and then she turned that son of a bitch into a bomb, caught it on fire after she rolled it onto the dude. So I, it was because, so well done, and again, yeah. very Terminator esque. At, you know, just ah. like keep setting him on fire, and just yeah. how much can we blow him up? Exactly, um, and I'm glad you said that because um, to me, this was very Terminator um, oh, yeah. adjacent. Like, yeah. uh, seemed inspired by it. And I think that was probably the intention. An homage. Yeah. yeah. We even got some music that was kind of like it. I heard some synth. I heard some, like, uh, some heavy sounding you know, music go with it. You know, like, just like a steady beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right on top of it. You can so tell whoever like, did that love yeah. Terminator 2. I think so. Yeah. Or, or the original. Or the original. I love the original. Right. That's another one. That's a tough one. Because <laughs> I love the original. But uh -huh. everybody knows T2 is just a better fucking movie. It's hard <laughs> yeah. because I love the original and I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, I digress. Well, that's okay. You know, um, I agree. T2 is great. But for me... Uh, the original is so good. It was just a tight movie and really, mm -hmm. really well written, really well done. Um, and, and I don't know. I enjoyed it for its simplicity. T2 was over the top. I mean, they Matt spent out... They spend every dollar they could spend on it to make it as spectacular as possible. And then some. Yeah. And it is great. It is great. Mm -hmm. But I, I just, there's just something I love about that original one. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that was reminiscent there of like the tractor trailer scene, you know, from Terminator, where mm -hmm. like the car's on fire, he's burning, you know, there, there's this somewhat, you know, feeling of relief that, okay, they did it, he's dead, you know, or, um, um, I don't know if she thought that at any point, but like we all knew he was coming back. Um, she breaks into her own record store. So there we are back where we started. We're full circle, full circle. in the record store. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that actually. Yeah. I do tidy. like that. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. She's just having a moment to herself inside because she's just like, I don't know, just uh, reassessing her situation. She's staring at the flame of a cigarette lighter. I mean, doing nothing. And uh, he just gets up, makes his way back in there. She sees the lasers come in, you know. Every time you see the green light come back on, you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So, yeah, I mean, and you wouldn't think that it would go more bonkers there, but but it did. She pulled some sword off of some uh, right. mannequin in there. I don't even know what that was. You know, I, I know, know. I need to go back and watch that end scene again, like, <laughs> For these details, but yes, it just, it was, it was bonkers. It was it, fun. To me, it looked like a fancy Masters of the Universe sword or something. You know, it looked like it could have been the 
belong to He-Man or something. But I feel um, like I need to look up what sword <laughs> that is, but that'll be for another time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I did neglect to mention who played Santa Claus in this. Did you notice? So I knew at one point, and then I went to look it up, and I didn't yeah. see it. I didn't Google it. I just looked yeah. on the IMDb. Who was it? Uh, Abraham Ben Ruby. Yes. And I was surprised. It was like on some something somewhere I heard his name, and I was like, really? Yeah. Um, and it's like, and I wouldn't have known that until I looked it up and saw his picture. Um, and, uh, of course, I mentioned it to my wife right away, and she's like, oh, Jerry from ER. I'm like, yeah. Jerry, Jerry. from ER. That's what she <laughs> That's what she remembered. And you know, you'll love this. My immediate thought was, Parker Lewis can't lose. Parker Lewis can't lose. <laughs> Dude, I met him. Did I ever, did you meet did him you? at Monster Mania? No. Nice guy. Is he? Super nice guy. Also played a troll in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just saying. Oh. But yeah, so Parker Lewis, that was what I knew him from. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But so. no, I did not know that was him. But I feel like somebody told me, and I did the same thing, like, really? But, yeah. yeah. It's like an ER. He was Jerry. Yeah, yeah. All Good right. old Jerry. Lovable big guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, he's not he's dead after the sword. Also. Sorry, I'm looking oh, yeah. up. I okay. forgot. I need to go back and watch. That movie's beautiful, but I, I'll be honest, I was not in a, you know, I was high. That was really fun. <laughs> I really feel like that one needs a second go. Yeah. Instead of just going, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> uh huh. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So th this chick is a survivor. She does everything possible to try to destroy this thing. You get the sword into its like uh, chest cavity where he seems to short out a bit. You know, he's already missing an arm from having the car on him. He's missing flesh from being burned. You know, now he gets a sword in his chest. You know, he's still coming after he pulls the sword out. So then she's like, I'll set a fire, set off the sprinklers. So she does that, you know, um, takes a little too long to get him going because he hacks her in the ankle, right? That hurt. And yeah, you damn right it did. She falls on the ground and like, all right, well, she's screwed. So uh, and uh, basically gets up for some reason to look over the counter as he's shorting out in the water, gets her fingers chopped off. And I was yeah. like. Even I was like, Ooh. Oh. it's like, cause you know, fingers hurt. Yeah. You know, they yeah. hurt. <laughs> and you <laughs> really don't realize how much you use them till you don't have them. Right. Right. Yep. So, and here's where we get the crawling scene, oh, you know, with another, another nod to uh, the original Terminator, yep. you know, to me, you know, she's crawling. You've got this thing chasing her along the ground. And then there was the, like a, then they have that whole thing where where she electrocutes him again. And the only thing I have to say there is you can't do that with electricity. I know you can nitpick a lot of things about this movie, but that one really struck me. That, that pissed like, you nope, off. Nope, nope. That doesn't work. You can't do that. Not logical. <laughs> well, maybe the taser mixed with the no, I don't know. I got yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if she would have gotten some like super, you know high taser unit or or something like that i might have been like okay okay maybe. but maybe mixed with the fire and the water and the car yeah and the, yeah maybe it was just the perfect storm of of taser right. like icing on the taser cake i don't know yeah that didn't make any sense but i i would have been okay with a trash compactor in the back but why would you have one of those in a record just store? randomly yeah hanging <laughs> yeah, out the yeah. Store. um except yeah. for like random bodies but I guess that's mm -hmm. not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, yeah, that would have been a perfect <laughs> ending. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Go all in with the, with the Terminator with references the... here. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the movie in a nutshell. It was I a mean, good uh, movie. I was mm -hmm. just, it was just enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe I was just in a good headspace. Um, I hope everybody likes it. I've seen, a lot of people enjoying it. There have been a couple negative responses, but no actual discussion on what they didn't like other than, yeah. oh, it sucked. Well, yeah. what sucked? Why didn't you? Because I'd be curious to know, because to me, it was just, it was a fun time movie. And I could yeah. see myself watching it every year as part of my repertoire. Yeah. And then. I'll venture to say that if you don't like this movie, you just don't like fun. 
you just don't like fun and you probably hate puppies too. <laughs> yeah. So we don't care what you think. Puppy haters. We don't yeah, care. Puppy what you haters. Think. Yeah. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm glad that you suggested this because I got to watch it a second time today just for, mm -hmm. just for funds. Yep. I had a great time with it. Yeah. Um, so typically when Don and I do these, we try to do a, a rating of it. Um, I don't know if you're super familiar with our rating system. We stole it from Ryan Joyner. Nice. Um, uh, we do a, a two rating um, on a movie. We It's normally a zero to five on both ratings, uh, one of which is a critical factor. So if you take a critical look at the movie, you know, uh, and the other one is a fun factor. So, um, and um, since you are my guest, if you'd like to go first, I will allow you to go first. Sure. Um, critical, I'm going to give it three and a half because there are some as you mentioned, you know, some blatant, all right, that's probably, but the fun factor gets like a five and a half. I know five is the top, but I just genuinely had a good time watching this movie. We did. It didn't drag. There wasn't the a point in the middle there. where we have to have this, uh, it's so cute, where we have to have this, you know, coming of age moment and like all your growth happened during the movie, man, but it was just like, so I give it a five on that. Okay. How about you? Awesome. I'm pretty similar. Um, I, I'm probably going to give it a three on the critical factor just because, I mean, you you have to accept a lot of things that just aren't incredibly possible. Plausible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the whole idea of, you know, the cyborg Santa, you know, being made with, you know, military From the technology, government with you know, yeah. now being a mall Santa, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it, it's unrealistic, you know, at its premise. So, I mean, if I'm looking at it critically, it's like, well, yeah, it's not really But possible. I have a, a quick theory on that. Okay. It just popped into my head. So it could be the yeah. judge. But what if, now, have you seen the movie Attack the Block? I no. will discuss this in the Alien movies. I've I heard of it, if but I haven't. If you have time tonight, you should go watch that movie. Okay. But I also don't want to give anything away. So maybe I'll bring my point up after you watch that. Look, but what if, what if this was a test of the government to put an innocuous Santa in the middle of a small town where nobody would miss anybody and to see the level of destruction it could accomplish? Maybe, maybe. I mean, oh, I, yeah, you know, yeah. In part two, we can find out that it's a big government conspiracy. Oh, that Probably could be. Been it, but um, tried to throw that out there. But watch <laughs> that block tonight. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, there's been other films that are kind of like that, where like uh, they kind of just use like um, something happens, or they set it up accidentally on purpose. You know what I mean? Just to see, you know, how like their we weapons testing goes. You know, yeah, you can see that. So, um, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll stick to a three on the critical factor. Although I did like some some other things about it. You know, there were some things that were pretty realistic, um, and. I'll I'll echo you on the the fun factor. It it's maxed out. You know, if I yeah. could give it a six, I'd give it a six. I smiled through this most most of the way. You know what I mean? It's uh so it, it's it's gonna be a five out of five for me on that one. Well. Yeah, I love so, that. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, um. I guess there's not a lot else to say about that. Yeah. Um, and once again, I, I thank you very much for joining me um, and uh, having this discussion. And uh, on behalf of Don, I'll say, don't let the bad ones ruin a good time. And on behalf of myself, I'll say, um, I hope you find movies that haunt you. Good night, everybody.